Hey everyone, this is Kevin from thechesswebsite.com. Pleased to announce that we're going to be going over one of my own games today. I'm going to be giving commentary. I'm actually going to be doing more of these. I'm going to take requests for different types of openings, different types of in games that you guys want to see. I'm starting to play a lot more chess, um, and so I have a lot of games on file. So if there's anything specific you want me to go over in a game, just let me know, and I'll I'll see if I can put that in a video. But uh, since we're going to be starting out today with one of my own videos, we have a special treat. If you're not too familiar, Will Stewart over at Online Chess Lessons, he's got his own YouTube channel. Um, phenomenal player. He's a national master. Really one of the strongest players on YouTube and giving some great chess instruction. Um, he is actually going to be commentating on this exact same game. So um, if you're curious, you can not only watch me give commentary on my own game, but you can also, I'm going to have a link in this video, uh, you can actually watch Will give commentary on my own game as well. So it'll kind of give you two different perspectives um, as far as both sides. Um, I'm also going to have a link in the description below for his channel. Um, if you're not already subscribed, I highly recommend it. There's a lot of great stuff out there. Um, and I really want to promote chess. I want people to get better at chess because I think it's a beautiful sport. So um, with that said, we'll go ahead and get into it. And after you watch this commentary, uh, make sure you check out Will's commentary as well. In this particular game, I was playing white. My opponent, we were playing on chess.com. I think he was in the high 1800s, uh, maybe 1875, around there. Um, anyway, I'll be playing white and my opponent playing black. And I started with pawn to d4, queen's opening. He responded with knight f6. And then pawn c4, the queen's gambit. And he decided to go to the queen's gambit decline line with e6. And then after knight to c3, development, trying to control the center board. Very, very common. He plays... Um, pawn here to d5. Now I'm just going to continue with development. Um, first bringing out my dark square bishop here. And this is very important for me. Uh, dark square bishop is always tough to get involved when you're white. Obviously it's very easy to go ahead and get the, the light square bishop involved into the game. You know a lot of times you're bringing out this e pawn very quickly. So you never really have to worry about this light square bishop. But I do want to play pawn to e3. Um, looking to support this pawn on d4. So before I kind of block off this pawn structure, I definitely want to make sure that um, I go ahead and get my dark square bishop involved into the game. And I'm also pinning down this knight to the queen. So a nice little move for me. Now he's going to play bishop 2e7, you know, getting ready to castle on the king side. Also trying to take away that pin right here so he really doesn't have to worry about it. I'm going to continue to develop my pieces again. No reason to get too crazy. Um, if you've seen any of my other videos, I, I really talk about center control of the board. So you want to develop your minor pieces, control that center of the board, and then try to figure out what your opponent's doing, and then try to come up with a game plan from there. So he decides to go ahead and bring his knight to d7, again, getting his pieces involved. Adding another defender on this knight on f6, you know, that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and bring pawn to e3. Um, again, building up this pawn chain right here, and then getting ready to you know, bring my light square bishop involved into the game. And then really after I get the queen, I have all my pieces developed. I can castle on the queen side. I can castle on the king side. More than likely, I'm going to castle on the king side. He'll just be a little bit safer. Um, there's no reason. He can kind of open up the board a little easier on the queen side right now um, after he castles on the king side. So uh, maybe a little too risky right now to go ahead and castle on the queen side. But those are some of the things I'm thinking about as I'm playing this. He decides to go ahead and castle on the king side, which, which seems pretty logical. And I go ahead and bring my bishop here to d3. Now, uh, sometimes you may see other moves. I actually really like the, the d3 move. You know, if he decides to go ahead and bring um, his pawn to c4, um, and I recapture here. Yes, I did move the, the bishop twice here. But, you know, if I look at it, if I look at, you know, this position right here, um, and then I come forward here. I feel like I didn't lose a tempo. Um, you know, I almost feel like I'm kind of, you know, in control of the center a little bit more. I have both my D pawn and my E pawn. I have a really solid structure right here. Uh, he no longer has his D pawn. So, um, you know, while some people will recommend a different move, um, I have a lot of experience with just playing bishop 2 D3. Um, so that, that's kind of why I did that. And he does, in fact, take... Uh, the pawn here on c4, and I recapture with my bishop. Now, uh, he plays pawn to a6, trying to get some, some queen side um, attack. As you can see, he's played pretty passive, kind of de defensive right now. Kind of see where I'm 
going to move my pieces, but he's looking to, to make a move. He can't really do much on the king side. Obviously, he doesn't want to weaken his defenses right now. So, um, you know, he's looking to, you know, maybe push. He's obviously, you know, he could have, you know, an outpost right here. Um, he could start to get his queen involved into the game if he wants to bring, you know, his pawn to c5, c6. Um, so, you know, a6, kind of a flexible move, just still kind of waiting. Um, you know, he, he really can't do a whole lot. He can't get his queen involved into the game. He can't get his bishop. Um, his rooks aren't going anywhere. So there's really not a whole lot for him to do. So I decided to take this time to go ahead and castle on the king side. Black now plays pawn to b5. Again, you know, deciding he wants to attack a little bit. Now I have two options. I can always bring the bishop back here to b3. I could bring it back here to d3. If this pawn was not here on e6, I probably would have voted to go ahead and bring it back here to b3. Again, I want to kind of, you know, have a lot of tension on this long diagonal, putting a lot of pressure on the f7 square. Uh, that's really a huge weakness. But since he has played this pawn to e6, you know, the bishop back here on b3 isn't doing nearly as much as I'd like it to. So for that reason, um, since he does kind of have this fortified, it's not as weak anymore, I decided to go ahead and bring it back to d3. Um, if I can't have this long diagonal, I definitely want to make sure I'm still having a lot of tension, um, and your pieces in the center of the board, again, are going to control more space. So I decided just to kind of centralize this bishop right here. Now he brings his bishop here to b7. Kind of like for white, it's really hard to get your dark square bishop involved into the game. For black, it's going to be your light square bishop. So uh, before, he couldn't move it anywhere, so definitely wants to get this activated because this is going to be his hardest piece to activate. Um, and the last piece that I have to activate is my queen. So I'll go ahead and bring my queen to c2. Um, he comes along and captures right here on f3. And a lot of people say, you know, Kevin, why did you move your queen here? He was kind of defending this knight. I have a lot of experience in this particular opening right here. After I take my pawn, really what I'm looking to do, again, it really depends on what my opponent's um, going to play, but I really want to move my king here to h1. I want to get both my rooks um, doubled up on this g file. And then once I can open this up, again, I have my bishop here on d3, my queen here on c2, aimed at this h7 square. Um, if I can exchange some minor pieces off and I just control this g file, it's going to be very, very hard for black to hold on. So that's really at this point where I'm going. I actually really wanted uh, to exchange giving up this light square, or this light square bishop for my knight. Uh, the knight in this attack is not doing as much, so I was fine giving up this exchange right here on f3. Now black decides to go ahead and play pawn to h6. Of, of course you can see if I take right here, uh, he now has a huge weakness here on h7 giving up this pawn if I decide to attack. And he wants to, this is kind of a nuisance for him, uh, just kind of pinning down this knight right here. So um, I decided to go ahead and exchange right here. It's not going to be do, it's not going to do a whole lot of benefit uh, just hanging out here on h4. Obviously, coming back here to the F4 is not going to do me a whole lot of good. So, um, again, I do want to exchange some pieces off because I want to kind of open up the air so I can start to attack. So, I go ahead and decide to um, exchange here on F7. Now, once he recaptures with his knight, I decide to go ahead and play pawn to A4. And, and I'm looking to do a couple of things here, but I do want to make sure that he's not really counterattacking too much on the queen side. Um, obviously, I think I have a strong attack coming up here on the king side, but I, I really have to be cautious of what my opponent's going to do on the queen side. So uh, this is really just thwarting all of his attacks that he's kind of um, throwing out there. If he decides you know, to bring his pawn down, his other pawn down, then I kind of have an outpost uh, for my knight or even my bishop would even be better. Um, so it's kind of a flexible move and just kind of I kind of also want to see um, what he's going to do next. Now, next move from black is pawn to c6. And this is a very important part into the game because anytime your opponent moves, you have to look at what was left behind. Now, this pawn before was being defended by this queen here on d8. Now, once it moved here to c6, you have to look at this move and say, what changed in this scenario? And if we look at it, this pawn is no longer defended. So right away, um, I have a very aggressive mind when I play chess. So I'm always looking for attacks. Any weakness, um, I try to overload that square um, and really attack my opponent. So in this case, I want to attack this pawn 
right away. So I'm going to play knight to e4 again, centralizing my knight, getting him very active in the board, but I have a discovered attack with my queen here on c2, attacking this pawn on c6. So again, always be looking at where your opponents are moving. If they ever leave you know, a square or a piece um, that was being defended and all of a sudden it's not anymore, Go ahead and attack that, see if you can overload it. Sometimes, you know, they can't, they can defend properly, um, but sometimes they don't even recognize that you now have a discovered attack like I do right here on the pawn. So um, instead of defending this, he decides to go ahead and play his knight to d5, which is great, and then I immediately come in and take this pawn here on c6. Now he's going to bring his knight here to b4. Um, attacking the queen. Obviously, I have to move the queen. I obviously want to make sure I'm also defending this bishop here on d3 um, and the pawn here on b2. So I go ahead and bring my queen back here to c3. Now, the, the rook's going to come over here to c8. This is an open file now. So th this is definitely good by black. He wants to make sure that he has his rooks on open files. They definitely do much better there because they can kind of control more of the board than they would let's say this rook here on f1 not doing a whole heck of a lot right now and that's okay I definitely want to activate him later on but uh, rook to c8 you know good move so I'm gonna go ahead and move the queen back to d2 again I still want to make sure that um, you know I'm protecting this pawn on b2 um, and this queen here on d3 now black decides to go ahead and capture here on a4 that's fine I'm just going to recapture with my rook and then he's going to bring his pawn down to a5. Now this is a good move. Um, it, it's definitely you know creating an outpost here for this knight. The only problem is he does have somewhat of a weakness with his pawn. He's you know right now this queen is tied up to this pawn. So uh, while he does have an outpost, he would obviously like this outpost closer to my king. But um, he's definitely he needs to be cautious that. Um, he's going to have to hold on to this. So uh, from here, I'm going to go ahead and play pawn to um, f4. Um, and this is a little move that's wasting time a little bit. I'll, I'll be honest, this is, if we look at all the moves in the entire game, probably one of my best move. Uh, but just trying to give myself a little bit of space. I was, I was kind of looking at the board and couldn't really figure out you know, what the next step should be. Um, I kind of, if you kind of looked at it but you know, before, um, with my rook here on a5, on a4, I'm now up a pawn in material. More than anything, I'm trying to get to an end game. There's no reason to get crazy. Um, I can easily get to an end game and win that. I'm pretty, pretty comfortable in the end game um, and openings. That that's really where I excel. Um, and so here, you know, I was no longer thinking about getting my king to h1 and then doubling up the rooks here on the g file and then starting to attack. My queen would have to come back here to c2. So I played um, pawn to f4. Now. Black decided to go ahead and take my bishop here on d3, and then after I retake, then his bishop comes down to b4. This is actually a much better position for Black, as you can tell. Uh, not only does he have a great outpost for his bishop here, uh, which is key, but this bishop is also protecting the pawn here on a5. So this is actually going to be somewhat of a nuisance for me to deal with, because um, I don't really have a good way to get rid of this. I can move my knight around. It's going to take me a couple moves if I want to kick it around, but um, more than anything, this is just going to be annoying. Now from here, I decided to go ahead and bring my rook back to a4. Um, it's not really doing, you don't want your rooks in the middle of the board. You know, it came up to capture, but you always want to connect your rooks. So I brought him back here to uh, the first rank here to go ahead and connect him. And then he plays queen to d5. He, he now realizes that he needs to play somewhat aggressive. He is down in material, so if he just kind of stays back and let me do my thing, um, I'm going to run over the board. So he definitely wants to play uh, a little more aggressive, which he's doing. And so I decide to go ahead and play rook to c1, as we talked about before. You always want your rooks on open files. So anytime I see a file, the first thing I think is, how do I get my rook there? You also, again, want to connect them. So um, I feel pretty confident with my rook here on a1 and here on c1. Now he brings his queen over to um, f5. And then I play rook to c2. I'm, I'm going to really look to, to double up here, bring my other rook here to c1, really dominate this file. Obviously, he has a rook right here. Um, so that's kind of my game plan. Now, he plays rook over to d8. Uh, you know, sure, not, not doing a whole heck of a lot. Semi-open file, but, you know, he's attacking this pawn here 
on d4. So that's fine. So I go ahead and continue with my plan, bring my rook over to c1. I didn't see anything that you know looked too suspicious, so continue with that. Now he brings his rook over to b8. He realizes that this is not going to work out well, um, so he decides to go ahead and bring it over. Now if he does move this bishop, he has a discovered attack on this pawn on b2. I decided to go ahead and play pawn to f3. Uh, now this is actually an important move for me because I, I feel like it, it really protects this knight here on e4. I want to get this queen developed in the game. And I know that if I do that, he can take this knight right away. Now I also don't want to move this knight um, because the queen will just be captured. So um, I, I feel like this pawn right here, not only does it support this knight, but I can also now swing my rook over here to g2, start to put a lot of pressure on this pawn on g7. Um, really like this move, f3. Again, it kind of opens the door and kind of sees what you know black's going to do from here. The only thing I do have to worry about is now my king's a little bit exposed. I mean, he was exposed before uh, this pawn here on f2 moves, but... Um, so far, I've kind of dictated the pace of the game. I've kind of been the one attacking, um, but the the king's kind of open now, so I do have to look out for that. Black decides to go ahead and start pushing his pawn here to a4, and so immediately I come queen to a6. Playing his pawn to a4, you know, it's kind of a bad move. He had such a good thing going with the pawn on a5 being a great outpost, and then all of a sudden, right away, he moves it to a4. And as we talked about, always look at you know what changed with the move and what changed when I looked at this is okay he no longer has this bishop defending this so I immediately want to attack and I move my queen here to a6 that was super aggressive I could have always just brought my rook over to a1 but I I really like this double rook um, I think it's so easy to play with so I decided to go ahead and get uh, my queen involved into the game again very important to note why this f3 move was so important Again, it's holding down this knight here um, on e4. But if I didn't have this this pawn, obviously this queen on a6 couldn't come over here. So uh, very important move. Uh, the rook's going to come over here to a8. I'm going to go ahead and activate my queen here to b7. Um, obviously, rooks and queens on the seventh rate can just destroy your opponent. I'm also attacking this bishop here on b4, so he's going to have to worry about that. The rook's now going to come over to b8, again, defending not only this bishop, but attacking my queen. So I'm going to continue to attack. I'm always thinking, how can I attack this pawn here on a4? He decides to bring his queen over, so it's going to be a little bit tougher. But uh, now I decide to go ahead and see if I can overload this pawn here on a4. Black now decides to go ahead and come over here to rook 8, a8. He realizes that I have double books here on a4, so he needs an extra defender right here. I'm going to bring my king here to g2. If we're looking at all my moves, and, and we're being honest, this, this is probably not my best move. Uh, I couldn't find a way to overload this pawn during the game um, any more than I already had, so I decided, you know, okay, that I really have no strong pawn moves in my opinion, so I decided to go ahead and move my king here to g2. Now, Black responded, and he brought his rook down to a7. Um, and then, I guess he wants to bring his rook back over here to a8. Triple load on a4. Again, I want him to have all his pieces tied up to just protecting one pawn while I try to maneuver and try to attack him. That's completely fine with me. I decided to go ahead and bring my knight over here to c5. It's not really doing a whole heck of a lot here on e4, so... Um, if I can exchange that or, or do something else, I would definitely like that. So he decides to go and take it with his bishop. Um, he no longer has his outpost, so his bishop's just not as good. And then I decided to take with my queen. Again, I'm up in material. Um, I'm up a pawn. I don't really mind. Um, I'm not really looking for uh, trading off a queen. But in this scenario, if he decides to go ahead and trade, uh, I would be more than happy since I control the C file uh, to go ahead and exchange and have my rook here on c5. Now, um, it would kind of be a mistake if I took with another piece. You know, I could take, you know, with my rook right here on c5. You know, if I did that, he could always come down here to d2, and then let's say I played king to g3. Uh, he could now bring his queen to e3. This is this is kind of tricky for me. It, it's going to be really hard for me to deal with this. I, you know, this pawn right here is now all alone. I have four pawn chains, not really what I want to deal with. You know, also instead of the rook, I could have taken him with, um, you know, could have just taken him with the pawn. He could have easily now come down to d2 if he wanted to. If I take, 
he could retake with his queen. Um, now if I come over here to g3, um, you know, he could take here on b2. You know, that's always an option. And then let's say I take here with, you know, rook takes on a4, then he could come to let's say e2, putting a lot of pressure on me. I just really don't want to have to deal with this. I think this is a much harder game for me to win. Um, so instead I just decide, you know what, I'll just take with my queen. If he decides to go ahead and exchange, that's fine with me. It's going to be much easier. Uh, but I'm going to have my pawns intact. I'm not going to have to worry about him coming down and putting me in check and chasing me around the board. So uh, that's why I chose queen takes here on c5. Now, uh, he decides to go ahead and bring his rook over to b8. And so I decided to go ahead and bring my queen back to c4. Again, trying to overload this pawn here on a4. Now he decides to bring his uh, pawn to g5, and I think this is probably one of his better moves. Um, trying to find a way to have some counterplay right here. I really like my play if I bring rook over to g1. That way, if he takes, I can go ahead and move my king. You know, it could be to f2, it could be back to h1, it could be to h3, and it'd be a discovered attack, and I would still kind of hold. Um, you know, a lot of the momentum on my end. He'd still be, you know, responding to what I'm doing. Instead, during the game, I decided to go ahead and take with g5, which allowed him to take with his queen on g5, and now he kind of has that momentum back in his court. He's now attacking my king here on g2, um, and now he can kind of chase me around the board, which is kind of annoying. Now, I still up in material, so I'm not feeling too bad about the situation. I, I don't see any way easily that he's really going to get to my king, um, but it's, again, still going to be somewhat annoying. Obviously, I'm going to move my king back, so I'm just going to move him back to f2. Uh, he moves his king to h7. Definitely, he saw just me bringing my rook over here to g1, um, winning that queen right here. So he definitely wants to make sure that his king is out of the way. And then I bring my pawn up to um, f4 right here. Attacking, um, you know, it's not doing a whole lot, but I, I really didn't feel like it, it hurt my position that well. And then he brought his queen back over here to h5, uh, getting ready for an attack. And I decided to go ahead and bring my king back here to e1. Now he brought his queen to g6, attacking my rook here on c2. Um, and I decided to go ahead and take this opportunity and take this pawn on a4. I probably could have taken this pawn earlier, you know, when I moved, uh, you know, pawn to, you know, f4. Could have already taken it if I wanted to, um, but I decided to wait a couple moves and go ahead and take it right here. Black now responds with rook over here to b7, and then I played pawn to b4. Now, in this particular situation, I was actually feeling really good. I think my position is fantastic. I don't see an easy way for him to come around and attack me. Um, I have a pass pawn here on the b file. I think it's going to be really hard for him to stop that. Um, so, you know, I, I figure he could chase me around the board, but all in all, I wasn't feeling too worried. He decides to go ahead and bring his queen to g1, attacking. Um, after I move, he takes, so he did get back one pawn in material, but he's still down a pawn in material. He's being attacked, so he brings his queen back here to uh, g1. Uh, I bring my rook back to c1, chasing the queen around. He brings it back here to g6, attacking. Um, you know, again, he's just finding attacks. That there's nothing too crazy to commentate on this part. But uh, I bring my king back here to e2, and then he brings his queen to g2. Bring it now back to d1. Definitely want to make sure that we don't draw here, and I just continue with the same moves over and over. Um, and he plays h5. Now, I, I think this is kind of a bad move. I think it's wasting time. I do realize that uh, he now has a pass pawn as well, so he wants to start pushing that. But in this scenario he has a lot of the aggression and I feel like this move wastes time and it allows me to kinda of get back in the driver's seat so while I do think pawn should be pushed um, as we'll see later in this game I think in this particular case uh, you know it's it's not the right time but I decided to go ahead and play rook to c2 uh, attacking the queen he moves back uh, and now bring the rook, or excuse me, the king here to e2. And now he brings his rook here to g8. And this is important because he definitely wants to make sure that he gets more defenders. With just his queen, he's just kind of being annoying, uh, chasing my king around, but he's not really going to do anything. 
So I decided to go ahead and bring my rook back here to c1. Um, and then he brings his rook down, gets involved into the action. And I just bring my king back to d3. Not too worried. He's not really threatening me, in my opinion. He's just kind of, again, being annoying. Uh, and he plays queen to f2. I, you know, I personally would have liked, you know, the queen coming back here to h1. That's fine. He brought it to f2. And I decided to bring my queen down to c2. Now, best case scenario is he decides to trade off his pieces. Anytime you're up in material, best case is you can trade down um, because it just kind of shows more and more um, how much you're ahead. It's a lot easier to win, you know, with one pawn and a king against your opponent's king than it is you're up a pawn, but there's tons and tons of pieces on the board and anything can happen. So, uh, you know, he really should have waited. He, he could have played a lot of different moves with his queen. Um, thank goodness for me, he decides to go ahead and take. So, um, after we take right here, now we have gotten to the end game. This is where I feel most comfortable. Obviously, the openings, I've memorized a lot of openings. I've studied the openings a lot, so I'm very familiar. But end game, I really enjoy. I think it's a big puzzle. Um, everything's very precise. There's not a lot of ambiguity. It's very black and white uh, precision how to do something. So I really enjoy that part of chess. So from here, I know exactly what I'm going to do. I need to centralize my king. I have a pass pawn. I need to get my pass pawn before he gets his pass pawn, and then it's GG. So from here, Black's going to play, um, you know, King here to G6. I'm going to do the same thing, trying to centralize. Um, he decides to go ahead and play, you know, Pawn to H4. You know, something like King to, you know, F5. He's trying to block me off. I can always just play Rook to A5, um, stopping him. It, you know, it's not really going to do a whole heck of a lot. Just him trying to stop me it's gonna be super hard now he could have played you know pawn to f5 that's not really centralizing his king but uh, maybe would have been a little bit better as far as stopping me getting into the center of the board um, I probably just would have come around the back way to kind of stop this pawn but he decides to go ahead and start pushing his his past pawn I first want to centralize my king I can get to a lot of places if I need to get to the queen side um, if I need to chase the king or if I need to come over here and stop this pawn and he decides to continue pushing. Once I see this, I realize, okay, I've, I've got to stop this pawn or I'm going to lose the game. So I come over here to a8. You know, I can slide over here to h8. It's really going to be hard for him to uh, protect. He can't really get his, you know, rook down here to b1 and protect it. So uh, I realize he's going to have to do something. He decides now to play pawn to f5. I actually think this is kind of a bad move because this is exactly what I want. I now want my king to come down and start to attack this pawn here on h3. Uh, now he brings his rook over to h7, uh, which is a good idea, but you know it's kind of lost. I bring my rook down to a1, you know, bringing it over to h8. It's not going to do anything, but I still need to make sure I stop this. Once I stop this, then I can march my own pawn up the board. Um, and then he plays you know, pawn to h2, good idea. I'm just bringing my king here to g2. Then kind of the mistake in the game. He plays rook to h5. And, and this is a real question mark because all this does is worsen his position. He not only, yeah, he's still defending this pawn here on h2, but he's now completely left this pawn right here undefended. And he's going to have to do a couple moves just to get back where he was. So uh, while a lot of times you want to keep tension and just improve your position, he just completely wasted time. So again, as we talked about before, what are pawns supposed to do? Past pawns, you push them. So I start to push up the board. He now realizes, oh, i got to do something to stop him. Um, and then I just continue to push pawns up the board. He now decides to bring his king ball into the game. I I wasn't quite figuring out what he was doing. First he tries to get it, get there with his rook, and then halfway through he decides to get there with his king. He, if he wanted to get there with his king, he should have come there a long time ago. Um, instead of moving that, you know, rook to h, um, you know, six or five, wherever it was, he should have got his king involved into the game. Too little, too late. I decided to keep pushing. Um, he brings his king over to e7. I'm going to go ahead. You always want to put your rooks behind your pass pawns, so push them forward. He now has to block it, so once his rook comes over, again, anytime your opponent moves, you look at what did they leave behind. In this case, he's left his pawn, so I went ahead and gobbled that up. Um, it's now going to be pretty easy breezy. He's going to bring his king over here. I'm going to go ahead and activate my rook. Again, improving my position, still holding on this pawn. 
After the king comes up, I decide to go ahead and take this pawn um, after he recaptures. The three pawns to one, there's not a whole lot black can do right here. It's kind of a formality. Um, I come down here to attack it. He defends it. I get my king involved into the game. It uh, doesn't really matter. He can't chase me around too much. I can just, you know, zigzag up the board. Uh, so he gets his king. I start to zigzag. Um, I now take the pawn. I'm now up three pawns. So pretty easy. We'll just kind of go through these moves. Um, you know, he comes back, attacks, and then I just kind of zigzag. I'm very methodical in the end game. I want to make sure I don't give anything up to my opponent. So as you can see. If you run this through some computer engine, I'm sure I missed some Maiden 7 or Maiden 17 or something. All I was trying to do was win the game. So uh, I'm going to start to push my pawns. Obviously, if I can get a queen or something, it's going to make it a little easier. So once he brings his rook over, I'm just going to continue to push. Again, now I can't do anything. Continue to push. Now all I need to do is just move the king out of the board, and it's a free queen for me. So I'm going to continue to push up the board slowly. He can't do anything. He can't really stop me. Um, continue to push, continue to push. After he takes, I get my rook, and then he has to move his king away. And now I can move my king, um, and the next move I'm going to promote, get a queen, and I'm going to win the game. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy this video. As always, I try to make sure that you guys are actually learning something. So hopefully you guys can, can watch these videos and learn something from, from watching me play. Also make sure that you guys check out Will Stewart's commentary. Again, the link is in this video. Um, but he also commentates the game as well. So hopefully since you have my perspective and his perspective, uh, you'll get a better idea of um, you know how this game was played and, and some things that you can maybe do to improve or um, what you can you know, take and actually implement your game. And again, I'm going to be doing more of these commentaries on my own game. So again, if there's a specific opening um, or technique or anything that you want to see that you want me to highlight, I, a lot of stuff comes up in all my chess games. So I'll make sure to, um, to get that in future videos. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see y'all in the next one. Thanks for watching.